हरे कृष्णा जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय राधा माधव जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय गोपी जन वल्लभ गिरिवर धारी यशोदानंदन ब्रज जन रंजना यशोदानंदन ब्रज जन रंजना यमुना पीरावन चारी यमुना जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओ नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओ नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत्य नरम चरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जाया मुधीर नष्टु अभद्रेशु नित्यं भागवत सेवया भगवती उत्तम श्लोके भक्तिर्भवती नैष्टकी कृष्णा वासुदेवाय देवकी नंदनाय नंदगोपाकुमाराय गोविंदाय नमो नम नमो पंकजनाभा नमो पंकज मालिने नमो पंकज नेत्राय नमस्ते पंकजांग्रे ओम ज्ञानतिमरंध से ज्ञाजन शलाकया चक्षुन्मील तस्म श्रीगुर नमा मूक कौति वाचाल पंगु लंगयते गिरी यत्तम वंदे श्रीगुरुदीनताम परमानंदमाधव श्रीचैतन्यमीश्वर नम ओं विष्णुपदा कृष्णप्रेष्ठा भूतले 
श्रीमते भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सारस्वते देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेषा शून्यवादी पाश्चात्य देशतारिणे वाछाकल्पतरूभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पति पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नमः जय श्री कृष्णा चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्रीअद्वैता गदाधार शिवासादिगौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा राम रामा हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम रामा हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम रामा हरे हरे योनता प्रविश्य मम वाच मीमां प्रसुप्ता संजीवय तकल शक्तिधरा स्वधाना अन्याम शहस्तरण श्रवण तगादीन प्राण नमो भगवते पुषाय तोभ्यम कथांचना स्मृते युस्क सुक भवि विस्मृते विपरीत सैतन्य नमा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा इस कक्षा का जो भी हिंदी अनुवाद सुनना चाहते हैं यूट्यूब इस्कॉन चौपाटी हिंदी में इसका लाइव प्रसारण हो रहा है और साथ ही साथ 97 सेवन एफ एम में आप हिंदी अनुवाद सुन सकते हैं जो भी इस क्लास का हिंदी अनुवाद सुनना चाहते हैं इस्कॉन चौपाटी हिंदी में लाइव प्रसारण हो रहा है और 97 सेवन एफ एम पे आप हिंदी में सुन सकते हैं हरे कृष्णा We welcome all devotees to our Gita Jayanti festival today morning class. Following this, we will have nice recitation of all the 700 verses, and also in the evening we will have yagya. So, very very happy that all of you have come to celebrate Gita Jayanti by hearing the Bhagavad Gita today. So today we will chant this verse. You can repeat after me. and we will today discuss uh, based on this verse as a foundation we will discuss the abstract or the summary of the bhagavad gita and then if we have time if we have time then we will discuss the advantages or benefits of studying the bhagavad gita and then we'll also discuss if we have time the mood or the approach of studying bhagavad gita but because today is gita jayanti we will focus on the summary and the rest of the year anyway we discuss about the mood and uh, the approach and the benefits of studying scriptures so please repeat this verse after me maline mochanam pumsam maline mochanam pumsam jala snanam dine dine jala snanam dine dine sakrut gita amritam snanam संसार मलनाशन मलिने मोचन पुंसम जलस्नान दिने दिने सकृदीतामृत स्नान संसार मलनाशन मलिने मोचन पुंसम जलस्नान दिने दिने सकृदीतामृत स्नान संसार मलनाशन
माताजीस So this is a beautiful verse, which the translation is like this. See the first line, Maline mochanam pumsam. Mala means dirt. So how to clean the dirt? Pumsam means human beings. How can the human beings clean the dirt that accumulates on their body? Jala snanam dine dine. Every day when we take bath, we are cleaning the dirt that is accumulated on the body. But if we take bath once, Sakrit means once. Sakrit Gitaam Britam Snanam. If we once take bath with the nectarine ganges like Bhagavad Gita, then what will happen? Samsara Malanashanam. The dirt that is accumulated because of the samsara, the material world, with all its distractions, temptations, all the challenges, all the visuals, all the sounds, all the senses are bombarded all the time. And so much dirt is accumulated in the consciousness. All of that will be cleansed. If we take bath with Bhagavad Gita, the nectar of Bhagavad Gita. So that is the translation. That just like we take bath to clean the body, if once we take bath, in the nectar of Bhagavad Gita, the dirt that is accumulated in the samsara will be cleansed. So once more we'll chant this verse and then we'll discuss the class. Maline mochanam pumsam Maline mochanam pumsam Jala snanam dine dine Sakrit Gita Amrita Snanam Samsara Malanashanam So this is the power of Bhagavad Gita. Actually today we are going to discuss the summary of the Gita and uh, it's going to be more of a didactic presentation. I will be giving a class and you are respectfully hearing, so thank you for this. But actually Bhagavad Gita was originally not spoken like a class by Krishna to Arjuna. It was a friendly discussion between two very close friends, Arjuna and Krishna. Of course, Arjuna understood that he is a disciple and he surrendered to Krishna and Krishna took the role of a guru. Still, it was more of a discussion, dialogue. It was actually a podcast. You know? it, was, it was not structured, systematic presentation on the Gita. It was like a discussion. Of course, it is organized, but it is the or world's first podcast is Bhagavad Gita. All right? But today's class is, we are going to analyze or summarize this podcast. What happened? What the discussion happened? And Arjuna will ask many questions, just like in a podcast, this, you know, the main guest speaker is there and then a person asks questions and he also explains his own realizations like that. So Arjuna asks many questions. You know how many questions he asks in the Gita? Okay, how many, how many verses are there in the Gita? 700. How many chapters? 18. And Arjuna asks in between questions to Krishna. How many questions he asks? 17. Krishna also asks one question to Arjuna. In 18.72 he says, have you understood what I am speaking? The speaker also says, no, after the class. Any questions? <laughs> so like that, Krishna is also asking a question. To Arjuna. Of course, uh, Dhritarashtra also asks a question in the, right in the beginning of Gita, of course, but because we don't like Dhritarashtra so much, so I think we're not included that. But of course, Dhritarashtra is a Vaishnava. He, he surrendered to Krishna eventually. But it, that question is not in the context. So we are going to take this discussion of Krishna and Arjuna. And um, we will discuss each summary of the each chapter. 
so that when you go back today, you will have some um, <clears throat> understanding of each chapter of the Gita. Now, before we dive into the summary, I want to chant one verse which Shankaracharya has composed. You know, the, he says, if we attentively hear today Bhagavad Gita, the analysis or the discussion on the Gita, what will happen? You don't have to repeat. Bhagavad Gita kinchidadita Ganga jalalava kanika pita Sakrudeva murari samarcha kriyate tasyana yamena charcha. He says, if somebody understands or tries to understand little bit of the Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavad Gita kinchidadita applies little bit of intelligence to understand Bhagavad Gita, what will happen? He says many more examples. Bhagavad Gita kinchidadita Ganga jalalava kanika pita. If you drink little bit of Ganga jal, Sakrid, Sakrid means once. Sakrideva Murari samarcha. If somebody offers obeisances to Murari, Krishna, Gopinath, Gopalji, once, what will happen? If somebody does these three things, Gita, little bit intelligence you are applying to understand. Offering obeisances to Krishna, taking a little bit of Ganga Jal. If you do any of these three things, even once, what will happen? Kriyate Tasyana Yamena Charcha. He will, his name will not be discussed in Yamaraj's assembly. That means your file will not go to Yamaraj. So if after death, our, and we have a file, everything is recorded there. If that goes to Yamaraj, Yamaraj will open the file and he will say, Are, I know him. He was there in Gita Jayanti class. <laughs> he comes for he comes to temple. No, 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 no. Take his file away. He doesn't belong here. Emaraj will pardon that person. So, like this, Bhagavad Gita is very special. And um, as we discuss the summary, I also remember one very beautiful uh, instruction which His Holiness uh, Srila Radhana Swami Maharaj once gave on a Gita Jayanti class. He was giving a class in the morning many years ago. He said, what is Bhagavad Gita actually? He said, if you deeply analyze, he said, Gita is basically, it is, he paused and he said, when a lover speaks something very confidential, message of love to his or her beloved in the ears, the beloved gets goosebumps, the hair stand on end, the heart is overwhelmed with love, the soul is captivated, so then Maharaj said, similarly, when Krishna, Bhagavad means God, Krishna, Gita is song. So Bhagavad Gita is Krishna's love song. He is whispering some wonderful love messages to each reader, hearer, student of the Gita. If you are attentive, we will be hearing Krishna's love whispers. So that is what we need to be. We need to be very, very attentive and absorb Krishna's love message to all of us through the Bhagavad Gita. Actually, there is a very beautiful uh, comparison given. Sarvo panishado gavo dogda gopala nandana parto vatsa sudhir bhokta dugdam gitam vritam mahat All the Upanishads are like gavo cow. Sarvo panishado gavo and dogda, the covered boy. Who is a covered boy? Gopala Nandana, Krishna is the covered boy and the Upanishads are the cow. Partha Vatsa Sudhir Bhokta and Arjuna is the calf. And what is the essence of the cow? The milk. And what is that milk? Dugdam Gitam Vritam Mahat. Bhagavad Gita is the, is the milk of that cow of Upanishads. So therefore, Bhagavad Gita is the essence of all the scriptures. So we have a great opportunity to study the Bhagavad Gita and Srila Prabhupada has so mercifully, the first book he gave all of us, the major translation, the major work was Bhagavad Gita. Actually, the, uh, Shankaracharya ji also explains in a very beautiful prayer, how all the Vedas are like a forest. And this is a forest where there are many beautiful flowers. Many trees are there, it's a huge forest. And all the flowers are compared to Upanishads. What are Vedas compared to? Forest. And what is Upanishads compared to? Flowers. 
And what do you think Bhagavad Gita is compared to? There are no fruits in this forest, only flowers. <laughs> huh? Honey, no, the Bhagavad Gita is compared to a garland made of all these flowers. And Krishna is so lovingly putting this garland on all of us. Like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when devotees would come to Jagannath Puri from Bengal, he would be there to receive them. And he would put garlands on each one of them. He would welcome them with so much love. So Krishna is giving us his love by putting this garland of his love of instructions through the Gita on all of us. Actually, this is a very beautiful uh, parallel to this in the Srimad Bhagavatam. You know, before the Trinavarta pastime, uh, Parishit Maharaj is so excited, he's so grateful actually, because Shukde Goswami is giving him pure Krishna Katha. So Parishit Maharaj is so grateful. So he tells Shukde Goswami that I am convinced that if you keep glorifying Krishna, if you keep hearing about Krishna, then we are going to get many benefits. So then he chants a very beautiful verse there. He says, Yashrin Vatopeti Aratir Vitrishna Satvam Chashudyat Achire Nadira Bhaktir Harautad Purushe Chasakyam Tadevaharam Vadamanya Seche. He says, if we hear about Krishna, what will happen? First thing, Aratir Vitrishna, the distractions in Krishna consciousness will go away. And we will develop attraction for Krishna. And the hankering for material objects will go away. Satvam Chashudya Tachire Nadira. We will be established in Sattva Guna. Our hearts will get purified. And this will not take a long time. Achirena dhira. Very soon this will happen. Very soon. And most importantly, what will happen? Bhakti haro. We will develop bhakti for Krishna. And purushe cha sakhyam. We will develop friendship with devotees. All of us want this. We want the distractions to go away. We want friendship with devotees. We want attraction to Krishna. We want devotional service. All of this we will get. Parishit Maharaj is telling Shukdev Goswami that, Oh, great preceptor, Oh, Shukdev Goswami, this is the benefits we are going to get if you speak Krishna Katha. So I request you, the last line, what does he say? Tadevaharam vadamanya sechet. When you are speaking, Tadevaharam, you are actually putting a garland on all of us. See, generally the speaker gets a garland in the Bhagavatam class, right? And we are grateful, this is mercy of the Lord. But Bhagavad Gita, Actually, the Bhagavatam, the scriptures, is actually, when the speaker is speaking, is actually giving a garland. Krishna is giving us a garland of love. So that's how we enter the Bhagavad Gita. So that's the introduction. So now we'll come into the first chapter. So how does the Gita begin? <clears throat> so all of you know the background. Mahabharat, war is about to begin. Sanjaya and Dhritarashtra, Dhritarashtra wants to know what's happening in the battlefield of Kurukshetra. He is excited, very eager to know. Now Sanjaya had a special kind of vision. He had uh, something like what nowadays they have, an augmented uh, reality device, glasses. I think iPhone has come with that, but that Apple Vision Pro, right? You can see. You don't need a uh, laptop, you don't need phone, and everything in real time you can see. It's like so many windows opening in front of you, right in front of you. So Sanjay had something like that, that kind, some, some vision like that, where he could be with Dhritarashtra in the palace, and you could see the entire battlefield. And Sanjay is describing what's happening in the battlefield. He says, Pandavas and Kauravas have assembled. Kauravas are sons of Dhritarashtra and they are cousins, Pandavas. They have gathered, and Arjuna is the chief warrior, and Arjuna wants to see the armies which are there on the battlefield. He asks his best friend Krishna, the Supreme Lord, who is also his charioteer, to take his chariot in between the two armies. And Krishna beautifully gets his chariot just in front of Dronacharya, Bhishma, the, the personalities whom Arjuna loved so much. And seeing them, Arjuna's mind starts reeling. He starts feeling emotional. He gets overwhelmed. 
and arjuna doesn't want to fight he starts presenting different arguments he says krishna i am overwhelmed with compassion how can i kill my brothers my relatives my grand 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 parents i can't do this krishna and if i kill them i will get lot of sinful reactions and the worst thing is if i kill all these people and if there is death and bloodshed the men will be killed and the women will be unprotected and there will be unwanted children and then there will be nobody to perform samskaras the family traditions will be lost arjuna then goes on he starts explaining the different consequences the terrible things that will happen if this war is fought and like that arjuna finally says krishna i can't fight he gives up he just generally when two boxers are standing to fight you know see the fight is a boxing match is about to begin when two fighters are about to begin a fight what is the first thing they do when the fight is about to begin they will stand up and they are ready to fight you don't begin a boxing match by sitting down but here is the greatest war ever fought and arjuna he sits down in the chariot and he throws his bow <laughs> not throws he keeps it down he says i can't fight krishna and the second chapter this is how the first chapter ends first chapter is arjuna explaining his reasons for not fighting the war and this is the context for the second chapter krishna admonishes arjuna and calls him an eunuch he says get up and fight how has this degraded importance come to you and then arjuna gives more explanations no krishna i can't fight and arjuna understands that he is exhausted all his arguments finally he surrenders to krishna and he says krishna i don't want to be your friend now i want to be a disciple karpanya dosho pahata swabhava prichhami tvam dharma sammuda cheta यश्रेयस्यानिश्चितं ब्रूहि तन्मे शिष्यस्ते हम सादि मात्वां प्रपन्नं आई एम ओवरकम बाय मेजरली वीकनेस कृष्णा आई एम बेगिंग यू आई एम आस्किंग यू व्हाट इज द राइट थिंग फॉर मी टू डू प्लीज टेल मी आई एम योर शिष्य शिष्यस्ते हम सादि मात्वां प्रपन्नं आई सरेंडर टू यू नो मोर फ्रेंडली डिस्कशंस प्लीज गाइड मी and that's when krishna begins his instructions on the gita and the first instruction krishna gives is arjuna you are not the body you are the soul and if you are fixed in this identity as a soul then fighting this war is service and this is transcendental and will not bring you any sinful reaction And then he explains how the soul the real i will not be destroyed if the body is destroyed and everything is fleeting everything is temporary how many of you have experienced something like this i mean i go through this many times you know sometimes you dream you have a very scary dream like i had recently a dream that i am stuck in an airport and i lost my passport my tickets everything and my whole bag is open all the belongings are out and they're not allowing me to board the flight and i'm crying and suddenly i woke up ah oh, thank god it was a dream right sometimes i have a very good dream like once i had a dream that i'm enjoying samosas jalebis and you know the sandwich pizza and all the tasty succulent items and then suddenly i woke up are it was a dream close my eyes again come on let the dream come back no the dream is gone the good dream won't come again the bad dream won't come again it was fleeting it just happened and it's gone of course this world is not a dream it is a dream in the sense it is temporary it is unreal in the sense it is so fleeting in fact shila prabhupad in the 8th chapter he writes a very beautiful purport he explains that if you compare the sky to eternity in the in the sky of eternity brahma ji's life which is 311 trillion years it is as brief as a flash of lightning so imagine 311 trillion years is as brief as a flash of lightning 
what is our life with this body, this plan, this grandoise plan that we have made up in our head? It means nothing to nobody. I mean, it is just nothing. So therefore, Krishna wants Arjuna to realize that we are not these fleeting bodies. So rise, Arjuna, do your duty. And this soul, the real I, is not withered by the wind, it's not burned by fire, it is not destroyed by weapons. It is immortal, it is eternal. And then Krishna explains the purpose of Vedas is to gradually help us, elevate us, to rise beyond all the externals and be absorbed in Krishna consciousness. So therefore, Krishna encourages Arjuna to render service by fighting this war. And he says that if you are, if you are fixed in the identity as a soul, then you will be able to do your both duties properly. We all have two duties, you know that? One is Swadharma, the duty which we have because of this body, because of our responsibilities in this world. And we also have Sanatan Dharma, our eternal duty which is beyond this world. Krishna says both these duties have to be executed properly in understanding of the soul. And then after hearing all of this, and because Krishna says that such a person is self-realized, one who realizes the soul. So Arjuna says, Krishna, then how does this person who is self-realized, who is soul-realized, how does he walk? How does he sit? Basically, he's not asking about walking or sitting. It's poetically saying, how does that person control his senses? How does that person engage in the duties of this world? What are the symptoms? What are the symptoms of a person who is realized, soul-realized? Or Atma Ram. So then Krishna says, his main uh, symptom is he's self-satisfied. He has a higher taste. He is relishing something higher. Vishaya vinivartante niraharasya dehina rasavarjam rasopyasya param drishtva nivartate. He is able to give up lower taste and distractions because he is experiencing something higher. I was recently hearing a uh, nice class by Srila Prabhupada, he was giving in Bombay, December 1976, almost 50 years ago. He's, in the class he is saying, yesterday I went to my friend's house. My friend stays at Malard. Prabhupada is talking about Malard, which is one of the suburbs. Even that time it was very crowded. So Srila Prabhupada says, and my friend is staying in a chawl, in a very uncomfortable situation there. It is so difficult. So I told him, you are struggling and suffering so much. Why don't you come with me? I will take you to Hyderabad. We have such a beautiful open farm, fresh air, fresh food. You know, you will get three times food. Everything will be taken care. Come there. So then he told me, I have become adjusted and comfortable in this crowded Mumbai. <laughs> I don't need, I don't want to go anywhere else. But then Srila Prabhupada is explaining in that class, because people have not got this higher taste. He says a pig is happy in his stool and living in the drainage, in the gutter. He doesn't understand that, you can't, you know, he won't appreciate halwa puri. So therefore, <clears throat> Arjuna is being told by Krishna that a self-satisfied person has a higher taste. And if you don't connect to this higher principle of the soul and get a higher taste, then there is law of gravity. Krishna says the distractions and aversions of this world will pull us away. Dhyayato vishayan pumsa sangas teshu pajayate sanga sanjayate kama kama krodo bijayate krodat bhavati sammoha sammoha smriti vibrama smriti brahmshat buddhi nasho buddhi nashat pranashyati He says how the fall down happens, it begins with contemplation of sense objects and that contemplation leads to attachment and that attachment leads to Kama, lust. And lust, when not fulfilled, leads to anger. When fulfilled, it is disappointing compared to the desire we had. So it is again leads to anger. And anger makes us deluded, sammoha. And that in the deluded state, we forget. Our memory goes away. The vows we have made, we forget. Smriti, vibrama. And in that state of forgetfulness, buddhi, nasho, our intelligence gets destroyed. And when our intelligence is destroyed, buddhi nashat pranashyati, we fall down. Therefore, Krishna says, Arjuna, get up, 
do your duty, be fixed in the identity that you are not the body, you are the soul and a servant of Krishna, servant of God. And in this identity, do your duty. Recently, I was, a uh, few months ago, I was hearing a class by one of our very dear friends, His Holiness Swami Bhagavan Kesha Swami Maharaj. And he says that, what is second chapter? Prabhupada has given the title. Second chapter is the contents of the Gita summarized. The entire Bhagavad Gita is summarized in second chapter. So if you understand second chapter and remember second chapter, you know the entire Bhagavad Gita. But sometimes we forget. So he gave a very good acronym. He said, if you want to remember the second chapter of Gita, remember Gita. G-I-T-A. G stands for Guru. The second chapter, first thing you learn is that Arjuna has surrendered to Krishna and accepted him as Guru. And the second is G-I-T-A. I stands for identity. There is a whole discussion on who we are, our identity. And then once we are established in our identity, then Krishna is giving up the third thing, T. T stands for our two duties, Swadharma and Sanatan Dharma. And finally, A stands for Atma Ram, the symptoms of a self-realized, soul-realized person. So like this, Krishna has answered Arjuna's question and told him to do his duty, be fixed in the soul, identity of the soul. Thus ends the second chapter. Now, Arjuna has heard all this, but he gets confused. Because Krishna repeatedly glorified Buddhi Yoga. He said, use your intelligence, practice Buddhi Yoga. And same and the same wavelength, Krishna also said, do your duty. So Arjuna becomes confused because Arjuna was thinking, Buddhi Yoga means I use my intelligence, connect with my intelligence means I can use my Buddhi to retire from the battlefield. So therefore Arjuna opens the third chapter by asking Krishna that why are you encouraging me to fight if you think Buddhi is better than just working? See Krishna had used uh, many times Shanti. So what is the meaning of Shanti? All of you know. Shanti means peace. Sa Shanti Mahapnuti. Shanti is very many times. Ashantasya Kutas Sukham. So Arjuna thinks Krishna wants me to be Shanti. Peace. And what is he telling me now? Fight. Shanti and fighting, they are different, no? So Arjuna is like, see, Arjuna is thinking Krishna is telling me to be Shanti. But that is not Krishna's actual instruction. See, when a speaker is speaking, the research has shown that audience, they get only 20% of what the speaker is saying. <laughs> and only God knows what that 20% is. <laughs> so 20% only. So, of course, Arjuna and Krishna is transcendental conversation. But Krishna is not telling him not to fight. But Arjuna is thinking, oh, I have to be peaceful. So Arjuna says, why should I fight? <clears throat> then Krishna begins the discussion on Karma Yoga. This is the third chapter. So Krishna explains, when we perform action in remembrance of the Lord, that will not give us reaction. See, Arjuna was thinking, I will not get sinful reaction if I don't work. But Krishna says, no, it is Karma Yoga. It is action which is transcendental that gives us freedom from bondage. So like this very beautifully, Krishna says, Arjuna, if you keep doing your duty nicely, if you fight this war as a duty, as a service, as Karma Yoga, then three things will happen. Remember these three things. First, sinful reactions will be removed because you are performing action, performing duty as a service. So there is purification happening. The first thing Krishna says is purification will happen. Second, when you do your duty, you are also setting an example. Krishna says, I am also doing duty. So you also have to do your duty. So purification, duty, and then Krishna says, just don't do your duty like that. Do with knowledge and detachment. So when we have knowledge of the Lord, and then we do our duty, then we will be able to avoid attractions, aversions, temptations. Clear? What are the three things? Purification, example, setting an example, and then knowledge we should have. So Arjuna says, Krishna, but you know, sometimes we know what is right, we know what is wrong, we get knowledge, but still we'll end up doing the wrong thing, as if we are forced to do the wrong thing. Why, why that happens? 
then krishna says anybody knows why is it that despite knowing everything we do improper action what does krishna answer lust kamayesha krodayesha rajoguna samudbhava mahashano mahapapma vidyenam ya vairinam mahashana biggest enemy number 1 enemy number 1 is lust this leads to anger this destroys everything because of lust despite knowing what is right we are not able to do the right thing so arjuna krishna recommends to arjuna that do two things regulate your senses and become fixed in the identity that i am a servant of krishna and thereby you will be able to avoid the control of lust very very simple clear instruction krishna is giving and with this spiritual knowledge then you get spiritual strength and with this deliberate intelligence you will be able to conquer this enemy of lust so like this the third chapter krishna concludes now after hearing this what has krishna recommended in the third chapter that you have to fight but how you have to fight in knowledge of krishna so therefore in chapter 4 krishna is going to explain his knowledge what is transcendental knowledge because arjuna needs knowledge now to fight and this is a very fascinating uh, discussion the fourth chapter is amazing you know how krishna begins he says arjuna actually this knowledge which i am telling you now i spoke this knowledge to uh, sun god vivashwan imam vivashate yogam proktavan aham avyahan vivashwan manave praha manurikshak ve bravit so i spoke to vivashwan vivashwan spoke to manu manu spoke to like that you know he starts giving the parampara and then he says in parampara this knowledge has been coming down evam parampara praptam in tradition in lineage and now i am telling this to you sa evayam maya tedya yoga prokta puratana why i am telling you arjuna because bhakto si me sakha cheti you are my devotee and you are my friend and you can understand the secret of this knowledge rahasyam etad uttamam so krishna's verdict is that if you are a devotee of krishna if you are friend of krishna and if we accept that krishna loves us that means then we can understand this knowledge so at this point of time arjuna says hey wait 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 this is this is like you know this is like uh, very uh, far out what has krishna just said krishna said i have spoken this knowledge millions of years ago to sun god so it's like you know imagine you have a friend who tells you hey, you know what at the same thing i explained uh, to uh, chatrapati shivaji maharaj then i explained to subhash chandra bose and i had also explained this to indira gandhi so you what you will think first thing are <laughs> how old are you <laughs> who are you right so krishna very non challengingly said that i have spoken this so arjuna says arjuna is like what is this who are you how old are you so then arjuna asks krishna aparam bhavato janma param janma vivashvata vivashwan is much much older to you katam eta dvijaniyam tamado proktavan iti how do i understand that you spoke this to vivashwan i can't understand this and this is the time when krishna reveals the most fascinating aspect about himself he says arjuna both you and i have gone through many births बहुनी में व्यतीता जन्मा तव चा अर्जुन बट द डिफरेंस इज तम वेद सर्वा नम वेद पर आई रिमेम्बर एवरीथिंग एंड यू रिमेम्बर नथिंग वाय हाउ कम कृष्णा रिमेम्बर एवरीथिंग कृष्णा सेज बिकॉज आई एम डिफरेंट दैन यू आई एम नॉट लाइक यू अजोपी सन अव्ययात्मा भूतानामीश्वरोपी सन् प्रकृति फामिष्ठाया संभवा आत्मया कृष्ण से ऐ एम अनबॉर्न ऐ डोट टेक बर्थ लाइक ऑर्डिनरी पीपल ऑफ दिस वर्ल्ड ऐम इन एक्सॉस्टिबल ऐ एम ईश्वरोपी सन ऐम द मास्टर एंड लॉर्ड ऑफ एवरी वन एंड वेन आई कम टू दिस वर्ल्ड ऐ डोट कम लाइक एवरी वन एल्स संभवा आत्मया ऐ कम इन मै ओरिजिनल फॉर्म ऐज ऐ एम propas bhagavad gita is bhagavad gita as it is krishna comes as he is that's it krishna see in the first second chapter what did krishna say we are not the body 
we are the soul. So you may think everybody is not the body, everybody is the soul. Somebody may misunderstand that Krishna is also not the body. So Krishna is clarifying, no. I come as I am. I am not like all of you. So this is a very, very important point we need to remember. See, just like when there is, you know, uh, when you're traveling now, in your car, if you want to go to Borivilli right now, you'll face so many traffic signals, right? Red light, you have to stop, green, you can go. But if the Prime Minister comes here, will any of the traffic signals work for him? He will just come and go when he wants. Similarly, when we come to this world, there are a lot of signals, traffic stoplights, speed breakers, birth, death, old age, disease, all of these things. But when the Lord comes, none of this work. So then Krishna reveals these famous verses from the Gita, which all of us, every Indian knows this because of thanks to B.R. Chopra's Mahabharat. Yada yadai dharmasya glanir bhavati bharata abhyutanam dharmasya tadatmanam srijamyaham paritranaya sadhunam vinashaya cha dushkritam dharmasam stapanarthaya sambhavami yuge yuge. Krishna says, whenever there is religion, I establish the religion, I come, I protect the devotees. And then the transcendental knowledge, which is this chapter, Krishna reveals a great truth. Krishna reveals something astonishing and amazing, which Prabhupada, this verse Prabhupada would quote many times. Krishna says, Arjuna, just understand, I am not ordinary. I means Krishna is not ordinary. Janma karma chame devyam evam yo veti tattvataha. Tektva deham punar janma neti mame tiso arjuna. Krishna is saying that my birth and activities is transcendental. And if you understand this, you will not take birth again. This is Krishna's amazing uh, secret that he is sharing with Arjuna. Very, very important for us to understand. And sometimes people argue that, oh, but Krishna also, you know, he died, no, in the war. I mean, after the war, when that hunter shot an arrow. So like that, people give different, different uh, arguments that Krishna also came and he also left. No, Shukde Goswami has removed all these doubts in the Bhagavatam very clearly. He gives very logical arguments to explain how Krishna doesn't die. Krishna doesn't take birth like all of us. So when Parikshit Maharaj in the 11th canto, 31st chapter, he tells Parikshit Maharaj, Martyena yoguru sutam yamaloka neetam twam chana yacharanadha paramastra dagdam jigyanta kanta kamapi samasavanisha kim swavane svaranayan mrigayam sadeham. He says, What are you saying? How can Krishna be killed? No way. The first logic is Martyena yoguru sutam yamaloka neetam. His Guru's children were taken away by Yamaraj. Krishna went to Yamaloka and brought those children back. So how can he get death? Second, Tvam Chana Yacharanada Paramastra Dagdam. And you remember, Parikshit, when you were a baby, what happened? A Brahmastra was released on your mother's womb. And Krishna entered your womb. Angushta Matra Mamalam Surat Purata Molinam and he protected you. So how can that person die? And Jigyanta Kanta Kamapi Samasava Nisha. And in the battle with Lord Shiva, Krishna defeated Shiva. And Shiva is who? The one who brings end to everyone. That person is brought to end by Shiva. And you defeated Shiva. So you cannot be killed by anyone. Kim Swavane Svaranayan Mrigayam Sadeham. And the hunter who shot an arrow at your lotus feet, right in front of you, you made him go to the spiritual world. So how can somebody who shoots you go to the spiritual world and you get, you, you get killed? No, you are just performing pastimes. But like that, in the Gita also Krishna says very, very clearly that his activities are not material, it is transcendental. And this is the transcendental knowledge that Krishna gives Arjuna. So after explaining his appearance and his mission, then Krishna says, practice devotional service, which is the goal of all the yajna, which he already explained in the third chapter. And then Krishna explains, the relationship of the soul with Krishna, which is as a devotee, as a servant, is learned by approaching a bona fide spiritual master. Tadviddi pranipatena pari prashnena sevaya upadekshyantite gyanam gyaninas tatpadarshinam. So he says, approach a guru, 
serve him, listen from him humbly, and you will also understand all this transcendental knowledge. So we can get the transcendental knowledge which Arjuna got from Krishna if we approach a bona fide spiritual master and take his shelter. So therefore, chapter 4 ends with Krishna glorifying transcendental knowledge and requesting Arjuna, arm yourself with this knowledge and fight. Fight the war. See, we need to know this knowledge of Krishna because this will help us navigate through the challenges of this world. See, we are sometimes stuck in this world so much. You know, our problems is grace. Radha Gopinath Prabhu very beautifully says, you know, you have a 10 rupee coin, you keep it close to your eyes, you can't see the sun. Similarly, of course, the sun is quadrillion times bigger than the coin, but that coin has the capacity to block our vision of the sun. Similarly, our issues sometimes are so overwhelming that we are not able to see the beautiful reality which is beyond us. So, this transcendental knowledge will help us appreciate a reality which is beyond us. Therefore, Krishna explains this transcendental knowledge. But so far, we have discussed four chapters. Now, Arjuna is impressed. Okay, I have to, there are two things. Work also Krishna has spoken and Krishna has also spoken about knowledge. So, work requires activity and knowledge generally tends to be inactive. So, Arjuna is one perplexity. He says, Krishna, my determination is a little confused because I somehow see fighting and knowledge as contradictory. So, can you definitely tell me what is better, renouncing work or working in devotion? Renouncing work or working in devotion. That is the fifth chapter beginning. And Krishna answers that the real sannyasi, real renunciant is he, who is detached from the results of his work. Such a person, he will act. He will do his duty, but he knows that his body is acting, but he is actually belonging to Krishna. So I want to clarify here, Krishna also explains very nicely this point that, you know, sometimes we think not being attached, how can we function? No, see, not being attached to the results doesn't mean you don't want results. If a student is going for exams, studying for college, if he says, I don't want, I'm not attached to results, no, he will want results. If you're doing business, if you're doing a job, you need results. But there is something deeper here. The purpose should be more than the results. See, a child, if he's studying because he wants marks in the exam, that is a very low, uh, low attachment. So when Krishna says, be detached from the results, what he's saying is, the child should, instead of being attached to the results, marks in the exam, the child should want to master the subject. So if you master the subject, then automatically you'll get good results also. And there is something higher than mastering the subject also. You know, if you want to expand your, you know, if you want to enter, like say, if you want to expand your education, if, if, you're, if your mood is, uh, I want to have an educated mind, that is like the highest goal, and within that, I want to master this subject. And yes, I also want good marks. See, if you say, don't have any results, don't seek results, then every employer will be happy. If his employees, he will always tell his employee, follow Gita, don't be attached to results, I will not give you your pay. <laughs> no, we need, we need the results, but we need a purpose higher than simply the results that we are seeking. So as we do our duties, what will happen? We'll go through our ups and downs. We will need shelter, we will need peace. So Krishna says, fix your mind on the Supreme. Know that Krishna is the ultimate. See, we all want peace. When we go through these troubles, ups and downs in our duties, we'll go through this. At that time, Krishna says, connect to this most important principle that Krishna is the ultimate source of peace. Bhoktaram yagya tapasam sarvaloka maheshwaram surdam sarvabhutanam gyatva maam shantim ruchyati. Krishna is the enjoyer. Krishna is the best friend of all living entities. If you remember this one line, Suhurdam Sarva Bhutanam. Krishna is our best friend and well-wisher. If you always remember this, then Shanti. Then we will experience peace. So like this, in the first five chapters, Krishna has beautifully explained Buddhi Yoga, working with consciousness which is fixed on Krishna without selfish desires. But Krishna also explained about how to, you know, Jnana Yoga. He also explained how to cultivate knowledge. Also as a stepping stone to Krishna consciousness. So what, so at the end of the fifth chapter, what Krishna did, 
is he is told arjuna that he should uh, he should cultivate jnana and for that you need dhyana so krishna is going to give practical tips practical ways by which you can connect with krishna you can meditate on krishna by which you can know krishna these are all uh, this is the entire sixth chapter this is the explanation of the sixth chapter where krishna's conclusion is ultimately what is ultimate dhyana ultimate meditation it is on krishna's lotus feet krishna so krishna explains that he explains in the sixth chapter how okay, how to do yoga because that is also one way you know yoga is one way to develop renunciation krishna has spoken both things. krishna has not said only do work krishna has also spoken about renunciation in the fifth chapter in the third chapter so everywhere so in the sixth chapter what krishna does he speaks how we can develop this renunciation through dhyan yoga through we can develop renunciation through knowledge also and through dhyan also so how to do that dhyan yoga he says go to the forest sit straight do meditation meditate on the tip of your nose don't keep your eyes fully closed don't keep it full open also sit on a kushagra all that things he says arjuna hears all of this and he says krishna this is so difficult arjuna is saying it is so difficult so can we do this and why it is difficult arjuna says because chanchalam hi mana krishna pramati balavadridam tasya ham nigraham manye vayo riva sudushkaram mind is chanchal very very fickle sometimes the word chanchal appears very sweet so we think mind is very sweet no chanchalam hi mana krishna pramati mad also not simply chanchal mind is fickle but also mad sometimes you think okay the child may be the mind may be fickle and mad but i will control it no balavad very strong also so you may think okay the mind may be fickle uh, mind may be uh, uh, mad mind may be strong but i am you know i will negotiate with the mind and make it quiet no balavad dridham mind is stubborn also you can't negotiate with the mind krish arjuna is telling this the one who could he said i can control a cyclone but i cannot control my mind so then krishna says by pra- yeah krishna agrees he says it is very difficult but with practice and determination detachment you can do this then arjuna says but krishna if i do all of this and then what if i fail as a yogi what happens to an unsuccessful yogi krishna says dev if you are also unsuccessful also no problem you will get birth in a very good devotee family and you will be able to continue from where you left off in the last life and shila propad in the purport he gives his own example that how he was born in a very good devotee family and how he got opportunity to devotional service so then finally krishna says arjuna become a yogi and the greatest yogi is yogi naam api sarvesha madgate nantar atmana shraddavan bhajate yo maam same yukta tamo mata the greatest yogi is one who meditates on me krishna says so like that if you see everywhere krishna in the bhagavad gita he is like a menu card you know is like you get a menu card you get all the things you know and then you ask that person okay what is the best and that that fellow will tell you what is the best similarly krishna is giving everything but is also giving his opinion what is the best so that's how six chapters are ending now seven chapter begins talks so what did krishna say in the sixth chapter meditate on whom krishna so to meditate on krishna you know you have to concentrate your mind on krishna but that becomes easy if you know a lot about that person see when you know glories of that person when you know his opulence then it becomes easy to remember if you don't know anything about that person then it becomes very difficult so knowledge of the absolute is seven chapter so i remember we were some two weeks ago we were in gev we were in a dining table taking prasad together there was a western devotee he didn't know the name of one of the wealthiest man in india who is one of the wealthiest man in the world so he said who is he i don't know him so our ragunath vrindavan priya prabhu he said you know he earns he has so much billions thousands and billions of dollars he explained all his net worth and all of that for so this prabhu ji was little impressed then vrindavan priya prabhu said you know he earns 85 billion dollars every minute he said what and then his uh, tissue paper this uh, napkin he was eating prasad that fell on the gr- floor so he was trying to look for it and in few seconds he picked it up so then <laughs> vrindavan priya prabhu said you know this person i'm talking about if he is taking prasad and if his napkin falls he will not bend down to lift it because in that time 
he can buy the entire napkin industry. <laughs> he's earning, so like that he was graphically telling his opulences. So when he heard his opulences, then this Prabhuji was impressed. Oh, he's so rich, so wealthy. So like that, Krishna in the seventh chapter is telling how, you know, he is the supreme truth. Everything in existence is a combination of material and spiritual energies. And that is all coming from him. So when we hear all of that, then it becomes easy to concentrate our mind on Krishna. He says he is the active principle of everything. So when, when somebody says, see, if you hear about Krishna as the greatest, then what do we think we are? We may think we are useless, kachara. But Krishna, again, I am telling you, Krishna, how much he loves us. He doesn't treat us like a piece of garbage. Krishna gives a very high position to all of us also. He tells Arjuna, Mattaha parataram nanyat kinchidasti dananjaya mai sarvam idam protam sutre mani ganaiva. He says, I am that, you know, then there is a garland, mani, pearl. Garland of pearls. There is a thread which is not seen, but it is binding all of them. I am that. So when Krishna is saying he is everything, he is telling we are also like money. <laughs> he is giving us also importance. We are also special. We are also dear to Krishna. And unfortunately, we are not able to appreciate because we are controlled by the three modes. And Krishna says, because of these people, the, people, the conditioned souls don't come to me. But if we surrender to Krishna, then we'll be able to overcome the influence of these three modes. Devi esha gunamai mama maya duratyaya mamevai prapadyante maya metam tarantite. Four kinds of impious souls, they'll never come to me, Arjuna. And there are four kinds of pious souls. Those who are disturbed, those who want money, those who are curious and those who are jnanis, they will come to me. Of all these four, the jnani, one who really wants to know me, is the best. But of course, all the four are good. I like all four of them. And Krishna is happy. And then Krishna says, but unfortunately, you know, people, instead of coming to me, they go to all the devtas. They are less intelligent. They don't understand that the devtas are able to give them benefits because I only empower the devtas. And I only give the intelligence to them to go to devtas also because they, they, are, they don't want to come to me. But worse than them, if those who consider me as impersonal and formless, Avyaktam vyakti mapan manyante maam abuddhaya. Abuddhaya, he says. He says, those who go to devta, they are alpa buddhi, they are less intelligent, but those who think I am formless, they are a buddhi, means they have no intelligence. So, like that, Krishna says that those who are truly pious, those who are truly have exhausted all the reactions of their karma, they will understand, I am the Lord, I am the governor of all the material manifestation of all the devtas all the sacrifice, all knowledge. And if one knows all of this, then person can understand me at the time of death. So in the eighth chapter, Arjuna now right now pauses Krishna because seventh chapter ended like this. At this point of time, Arjuna pauses Krishna and says, Krishna, wait, can you, he briefly asks about the terms that Krishna used. You know, Krishna had mentioned Brahman, Karma, Devta, Prakriti, and about understanding me at the time of death. So can you explain this? Arjuna asks Krishna. And Krishna briefly mentions the other four terms and then zooms into the topic of knowing him at the time of death. This is the whole eight chapter. Antakale cha mameva smaran muktva kalevaram ya prayati samad bhavam nastyatrasra samshaya yati nastyatra samshaya Without doubt you will come to me if you remember me at the time of death. So how do we remember Krishna at the time of death? We start practicing now, Krishna says. And what is that? And how do we start practicing now? We start remembering how Krishna is the transcendental person who knows everything. He is the oldest. He is the smallest. He is the maintainer of everything. And then Krishna says, one who understands and remembers all of this will come to the spiritual world and will never have to come to material world. And then Krishna tells Arjuna, Arjuna, don't worry about all the other paths. You know, I have spoken about you know, Vedic study, Yoga, austerity, sacrifices, charity, jnana, karma, don't worry of all of that. The results of all of this you can get by simply performing devotional service. And you can reach the eternal abode. This is the eighth chapter. Now, ninth chapter is continuation of seventh chapter. Arjuna, Krishna was speaking about his opulences. And he continues to speak about his knowledge, about himself. He was speaking about, sorry, his, he had given knowledge about himself in the 7th chapter. He continues to speak about that in the ninth chapter. 
because Arjuna had asked this question about death, so Krishna had answered that and now he's come back to this. And then he begins by saying, this knowledge what I'm going to tell you now, this is the ninth chapter, remember. Remember, 18 chapters of Gita, ninth chapter is the middle. And Krishna says, now what I'm going to tell you is the most confidential, nobody knows this. You can't simply know it by reading the Gita. You can know it only if you are anasuya way. Krishna says you have to be non-envious. And this knowledge is Raja Vidya Raja Guyam Pavitram Idam Uttamam Pratyakshavagam Amdharmyam Susukam Kartumavyayam This is the king of all knowledge. This can be experienced and this will give unlimited sukha, unlimited happiness. And for this you need faith. So to get the knowledge, to get the ultimate knowledge of the Gita, we need to have freedom from envy and faith in Krishna. And then Krishna speaks about the most powerful philosophy, Achintya Beda Beda. Krishna says, I am present everywhere. Maya tatam idam sarvam jagadavyakta murtina matsthani sarvabhutani nachaham teshvavastita. I am there everywhere, but nothing is in me. See, we have to understand this. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has given us this amazing understanding which balances and harmonizes the duality and the Advaita Vad, Advaita and Advaita Vad. Achintya Beda Beda Tattva, which means living entity is one with God but also separate from God. God is present in this world but is also not present in this world. Just like right now the sun is present in this room, but if the sun is physically present, we will all be burnt to ashes. But the sun is present in the form of his energy. Just like a child is gone to the hostel, the mother sees the child's clothes, books, and the mother remembers the child. The child is present in the house in the form of her energy. Similarly, Krishna is present in this world in the form of his energy. And we have to see energy and then understand there is energetic Krishna. Just like you take a 500 rupee note, whose photo is there on that? Mahatma Gandhi, right? Are you interested when you see the 500 rupee note, do you think, oh, Gandhiji, oh, so nice. What do we see? We see what this 500 rupee note can give me. What it can give me. Similarly, everything in this world, every tree, building, everything you see, all manifestations of this material world, it has got a stamp of Gandhiji. No, it has got a stamp of Krishna. But we are not seeing, when we see things of this world, we see it the same way we see a 500 rupee note. We don't see Gandhiji in a 500 rupee note. Similarly, we don't see Krishna in this world. We see how this world can give me enjoyment. That is our unfortunate diseased condition. So therefore, Krishna says, this is most confidential knowledge. Avajananti maam muda manushintanu maashritam. They don't understand. Param bhava majanandu. They don't understand that I am beyond all of this. And they don't surrender unto me. Therefore, the greatest souls, Arjuna, are those. Who are the greatest souls? Mahatmas. Krishna says, Mahatmanas tu maam partha devim prakriti maashrita bhajanti ananya manaso gyatva bhutadi mavyayam. The great souls are those who surrender unto me, who worship me. See, this is very important chapter because this 7 to 12 chapters is Bhakti Yoga. You know, it's like when you eat a burger, burger as what in the top? You know what is burger, right? All of you know better. It's, it's an American version of Vada Pav. <laughs> so you have bread on top and bread on bottom and in, say, in middle you have the bread, the Vada, the Patata Vada, right? The essence. So, the first six chapters, Krishna is teaching how to approach him, how to connect to him through karma. And the last six chapters, 13 to 18, Krishna is teaching us how to connect to him through jnana. The middle part, 7 to 12, is bhakti, which is the main juice, the main substance of the Gita. And there, 7 to 12, 9 is the main, main chapter. And there also, the verse, this is the, like the middle of the Gita, out of the 700 verses, right in the center, the most precious thing is kept. And that is this beautiful verse. You can repeat this after me. Satatam kirta yanto maam Yatantascha dhridavrata Namasyantascha maam bhaktya Nitya yukta upasate One who always chants my names, one who is fixed in his understanding that I am the Supreme Lord and offers me all obeisances and does bhakti, does devotional service, he is the best. So Krishna has given his verdict. He is the most fortunate devotee. And for such a person, even if he lacks something, Krishna says, 
I preserve what he has and I carry what he lacks. Yoga kshemam vahamyam. And then, even if such a devotee commits unintentionally some sinful activity, I will protect him and bring him back on the right path. See, just see how much Krishna is taking care. Kaunteha pratijani hi name bhakta pranashyati. My devotee will never perish. Krishna is assuring again and again, just become devotee of Krishna. Krishna is saying, even if you, even if you fall down, I will bring you back. Krishna is like, of course, we should not fall down. <laughs> we should not, that is an offense to the holy name. But basically, Krishna is showing how much he loves his devotees. See, Prabhupada often said, Iskon, Prabhupada established, you know, I have heard from many devotees, that what is Iskon? You know, we are all struggling in material life. We want to get Krishna, but we are suffering. It is like a hospital. Iskon is like a hospital where, you know, Srila Prabhupada is administering medicine to us, of holy name, through different devotees. So this is a hospital where we all want to get cured of our material disease and get, go back to Krishna. We want to get out of this hospital of material world by being in the hospital of ISKCON and get cured. But unfortunately what happens, we forget this is a hospital and sometimes we make it a police station. We start judging people, start correcting people, start treating others as criminals. So this is Krishna teaching us how Krishna is saying his devotee never perishes. Krishna is saying, come back to me. And to come back to Krishna, and Krishna says, to love me is not difficult. He says, just give me one leaf, one fruit, not even many fruits. Patram pushpam phalam toyam yome bhaktya prayachati tadaham bhakti upartam ashnami prayatatmana. Just give me a leaf, fruit, flower, offer it with love, bhakti, bhakti. That's all Krishna wants. So like this, Krishna has explained about knowledge of his energies. So ninth chapter has ended. Now, in 10th chapter, Krishna starts explaining his opulences more specifically, thereby revealing how he is the source of everything and everyone. He says, Arjuna, all the devotees know that I am the unborn Lord. And you know all the great sages? I am the source of all these great sages. And the material worlds and spiritual worlds, they are coming from me. And all the qualities you see, they are also coming from me. <clears throat> so therefore, pure devotees worship me. And then Krishna speaks four verses, which is considered as the Chatur Shloki Bhagavad Gita. These four verses is the Bhagavad Gita. If one knows these four shlokas, he knows the Gita. Where Krishna first says how when devotees understand that Krishna is the source of everything, what do they do? This is what they do. They come together. Machitta madgata prana bodhayanta parasparam katayantascha maam nityam tushyanti charamanti chada. They come together and they glorify Krishna. And uh, of course, first he says, Aham sarvasya prabhava, oh, Krishna is the master and the lord of all creation. Then he says this and then even if we don't understand much, if we simply do devotional service, Tesham vajata yuktanam vajatam priti purvakam dadami buddhi yogam tam ye namam upayantite. I will give you the intelligence to come to me, Krishna says. How much Krishna is caring? And somebody says, no, but I am not so intelligent. I don't know what to do. I am confused. Krishna says, Tesham eva nu kampartam ham agyana jamtama nashaya matma bhavasto jnana deepena bhasvata. I will remove the darkness, the confusion in your heart by lighting the lamp of knowledge. <clears throat> so like this, Krishna is reassuring Arjuna again and again. Then, after Krishna says this, Arjuna also confirms. Arjuna says, yes, Krishna, I agree. I know, Asito, Devalo, Vyasa, Narada, all of them have declared you are the Supreme Lord. And now Krishna, I want to know, how can I constantly think of you? Krishna says, very simple, you see anything splendorous, anything wonderful, just know that that wonder, that splendor, that magnificence is coming from me, that is me. Like example he gives, he says, of, of all the Adityas, I am Vishnu, of all the lights, I am sun. Of the Maruts, I am Marichi. Of all the commanders, I am Kartikeya. Of the mountains, I am Himalayas. And all these opulences, it's just, Mama Tejom Shasambha, it's just a fragment of my opulence. It's nothing. It's a small thing. Ekam Shenastito Jagat. See, of course, when we hear these examples, we're not able to connect so much. You know, Adityas, I'm Vishnu, or, um, you know, Maruts, Marich. But if Krishna were to come today and give this particular explanation, you would say something like, 
of all the phones, I'm iPhone. <laughs> or uh, of all cricket players, I'm Sachin Tendulkar. Or of all restaurants, I'm Govinda, you know. <laughs> of or all the channels, I'm ITV or something like that. So Krishna takes one category and takes the best in that category and says, I am that. That's how you can constantly think of me and remember me. <clears throat> so Arjuna acknowledges, this 10th chapter is over. So Arjuna acknowledges, yes, Krishna, this is amazing. Thank you for sharing this. And then Krishna asks more specific questions. He says, <clears throat> can you reveal this form of yours? You are saying you are pervading the whole universe. Can you reveal this universal form of yours? And then Krishna proves how he is the Supreme Lord by showing a gigantic, never before seen form of him. Huge. And if anybody claims to be God, Srila Prabhupada said, we have to tell him this. Show your universal form. Krishna also showed this to Arjuna. So, and what does Arjuna see there? He sees fire coming from Krishna's head. He sees all the planets in Krishna's body. He sees all the soldiers in both the sides of the army. You know, like he sees all the soldiers entering Krishna's mouth and they are getting crushed by Krishna's teeth and their skulls are getting... You know, so he's seeing all this Ugra Rupa and how Krishna's time is destroying everything. Kalo, Smiloka, Kshayakrit, Pravrutho. As time, I'm going to destroy everything. So this is what Arjuna is seeing. And then Krishna says, Arjuna, but you have a choice. You just become an instrument in my hand. Nimitta matram bhavasavya sachi. I have already arranged people to be killed. I've arranged everything. You just agree to be an instrument in my hand and you will get the credit. See, only Krishna can do this. In this world, no great bypass heart surgeon will say that I did great surgery because my instrument was good. Or no IAS topper will say that I topped the IAS exam because my pen was very good. No. Only Krishna gives credit to his instrument. Hmm? Actually, some of the most evolved people also, they understand that we are simply instruments. I think when Virat Kohli was asked that he hit the greatest shot of the century, in that interview he said, no, you know, that some, someone within me did it. He was honest enough to admit. He said, I know I can never do it again. So I give credit to that, someone who did it. So the point is, we are, ultimately we have to be an instrument in the hands of the universe, the force, the supreme, the, above, the Lord above us. So that's what Krishna is telling Arjuna, that, no, just become my instrument. And then when he's showing this universal form, Arjuna becomes fearful and he starts offering prayers. He says, Krishna, I took you so casually. I have to sit with you, joke with you, eat with you. Please, please, I'm very sorry. <laughs> Arjuna starts begging forgiveness. And then Krishna, to pacify him, he shows his forehand. He comes back to his original form. First he shows his forehanded Narayan form. Then his pleasing two-armed form. And then Krishna says, you see this two-armed form? Not everybody can see this. We may see Krishna, but we may not see Krishna. He says, only, who can see this 200 form? Krishna says, only those who are pure, pure devotees. Second, those who work for Krishna. And third, those who don't have any selfish desires. They don't want results of the activities for themselves. And those who make Krishna the supreme goal of their life. They come back to Krishna. So after witnessing all of this, the 12th chapter begins with you know, Arjuna wants to clarify his own position because Arjuna is attached to the two-armed form of Krishna. And Krishna also spoke about the universal form. And the Maya, many impersonalists, you know, they meditate on the universal form. So, Krish, Arjuna says, Krishna, what is better? Meditating on your personal form or meditating on the universal form? And emphatically, Krishna says, Maya Veshya Mano Emam. He says, Nitya Yukta Upasate. Just Shraddhaya Parayopetas, with faith, meditate on my personal form. And impersonal, formless, you know, there are many people who meditate on the formless. They say, Ek Tui Nirakar, you have no form. That Nirakar, formless aspect, Krishna says is, Klesho Dik Taras Tesham, Adik Klesho Gausme, lot of difficulty in that path. Avyakta Hi Gatir Dukkham, that path of formless meditation, impersonal path is Dukkham, Gatir Dukkham. Don't, don't go for that. Just connect to me as a person, I am here, I am the... See, Krishna is the most attractive, most beautiful person. He is standing as Gopinath, as Gopalji. And if you connect to this personality, then Krishna is assuring, Tesha maham samudharta mrityusamsara sagarat bhava mina chirat parta 
maya veshita chetasam then very soon i will take you out of this ocean of suffering of material world like you what krishna's mood is again and again he is saying i am there my hoon aapke liye i am there come come back to me just do devotional service so many places krishna is giving reassurances then krishna gives options to arjuna he is telling him to take baby steps to come to him see he says ideal is what always mai eva mana dasva mai buddhi nimesha just 24 hours remember me completely focus on me this is what we all hear right all the time this is the first option krishna gives fix your mind completely on krishna or you may say this option is not possible then immediately next verse krishna says okay that can't be done no problem you follow the regulative principles of bhakti yoga abhyasa yogena tato maam ichhaptum dhananjaya chant hari krishna 16 rounds go to temple associate with devotees do the regulative principles of bhakti yoga that also if you can't do krishna says okay then you do work for me see how much accommodating krishna is you says oh i can't work also then he says okay then you are doing some work you are doing something give up the results of that for some good cause that also you can't do okay then you try to get some knowledge so basically you know krishna is not like you know the way some fanatics present religion that if you don't come to our god you will eternally be condemned in hell no krishna is always there in the heart is accompanying us so then krishna says there are some qualities also you have to develop non envious tolerant don't trouble others and if and cultivating these qualities are also part of the process of worshiping krishna so this is the 12th chapter which is called bhakti yoga this is how 12th chapter ends everybody is there so far i know you may <laughs> i know you may not remember all of this even i don't remember i i need notes but the flow so far 12 chapters we have covered so now arjuna opens the 13th chapter remember 13 to 18 is what section now gyana yoga section so arjuna see krishna had mentioned about kshetra kshetra gets so arjuna says what is the field of activity and who is the knower of the field of activity what actually happens so krishna says this body is the field of activity and the soul is the knower of this field of activity the soul is the one who performs action and there is another knower of the field of activity which is super soul so there are three people there is this body for us body mind intelligence combined thing we call as kshetra and then there is soul and that there is super soul and 13th chapter krishna is explaining how the soul should connect to super soul through gyana through knowledge and there he says we need to cultivate um, what is the first and most important item of knowledge krishna says we should have humility see now remember what is the whole thing krishna is saying there is body there is soul and super soul so we are in, like soul is always connected attached to the body body mind ego intelligence that whole material thing right so the bhakti yoga bhagavad gita is all designed to turn our neck which is tilted towards body mind ego and turn it away from that matter to, and turn it to super soul that is the whole process of the bhagavad gita and for that through knowledge how do we do it so there are 20 items of knowledge and the most important is is amanitvam adam vitvam ahimsakshanti rarjavam acharya pasanam shaucham stheryam matma vinigraham amanitvam humility and adam vitvam pridelessness this is the most important if you want to know about krishna know about our relationship with krishna humility is needed like in hindi they were saying kad bada nahi karte ediyan uthane se as children you know we would stand on high heels and try to become tall so there is a saying in hindi which says kad bada nahi karte ediyan uthane se unchaiyan to milti hain sar jhukane se so we need to bend we need to be humble so see you have to remember one very important thing arjuna thought initially in the gita when the gita bhagavad gita krishna started speaking rajasik they started their rajamil kant so i had to get up from my bench <laughs> and i started walking and when i went ahead the gardener there was watering the plants and the water mixed with the earth created a fragrance and there were beautiful fragrant flowers there <sighs> that gave me satisfaction first situation was tamasik that was suffering second was stimulating that was rajasik this was satisfying satvik then i came to temple it was around 8 o'clock in the night i went to sleep morning got up came for mangalarti and when the darshan opened the fragrance of the garlands of the deities maha the fragrance of the altar it just came to my nostrils and i was like 
ah now i can die you know that moment it was like now i am like it was like as if you have come home you have shelter there is no suffering there is no struggle but there is shelter that is shuddha sattva that is beyond the three modes so we are generally either in suffering situation or we are stimulating ourselves or at best we are in sattva guna some satisfaction but krishna is speaking about shuddha sattva maam cho avya vichare na bhakti yoga practice devotional service for like this for like this 14 chapters have completed so now 15 chapter krishna says how to break free from these modes he says he gives an example he says this material world is like an upside down banyan tree you see the reflection of a banyan tree on the lake it appears ulta he says we are also trapped in this reflection with the sword of knowledge cut this detachment with detachment the sword of detachment and surrender to krishna and get out of this illusion like that krishna says you know uh, if a necklace there is a story the necklace of the queen fell in the uh, it was taken away by a crow and it was hanging in the branch and the king gave a announced a reward and the reflection of that necklace was seen on the lake and one man he thought the necklace is there and he was trying his best to get that he was swimming hard but he was not getting it and when he came out there were self help motivational gurus who were telling him swim harder uh, and there were books on how to get that necklace in the reflection but then a sadhu came by held his neck and turned it up and showed him the necklace is there so that's what krishna is teaching us in the 15th chapter he says the foolish can't understand and learn that krishna says i am the splendor of the moon i am the fragrance of earth i am making the vegetable succulent i am the paramatma in everyone's heart again krishna is saying i am there with you always sarvasya chaham ridisanni vishto मत्त स्मृतिर्जानमपोहनम चेद सर्वेरहमेव वेद्यो वेदातृद्वेद विदेव चाहम ऐ एम देर इन एवरीबडीज हार्ट ऐ एम दि कलमिनेशन ऑफ ऑल वेदांत कम बैक टू मी कृष्णा इज रिपीटेडली अपीलिंग टू अस टू कम बैक टू हिम एंड कृष्णा इन द फिफ्टीन चैप्टर एज एक्सप्लेन अबाउट ऑस्पिशियस एलिवेटिंग एक्टिविटीज एंड नाउ यू एक्सप्लेन्स अबाउट द डिमोनिया क्वालिटीज इन द सिक्सटीन चैप्टर यू एक्सप्लेन्स फर्स्ट द डिवाइन क्वालिटीज एंड देन he explains how those who are demoniac they can't understand all of this and how they think he gives a whole psychology of the atheistic demons idam madhya maya labdam imam prapse manoratam idam asti idam ato me bhavishyati punardam punardhanam i am i am having so much money now i am going to have this scheme i am going to earn more money and this whole world is coming through sex he is only thinking of sex life and for him that is the highest kim manyat kam ahe to kam there is nothing greater than lust so like that he is planning to kill his enemies aso maya ata shatrur anishe chaparam api i am the greatest i am the best ishvaro ham ham bhogi siddho ham balwan suki and is there anyone more wonderful than me adyo bijana man asmi kone asti sadrusho maya say look at me i am the most wonderful person so like that krishna explains the psychology of the demons and then he says arjuna one should give up demoniac mentality and that can be given up by following scriptures the difference between divine and demoniac people krishna says is divine personalities they follow the instructions given in the scriptures ya shastra vidhe musrijya vartate kama karanat ata siddhe mava apnoti na sukham na param gatim if you don't accept scriptures there will be suffering so then krishna arjuna says in the 17th chapter okay krishna what if somebody doesn't follow scriptures but because krishna has spoken about scriptures as the main thing 17 chapter arjuna says but what if they worship but according to their own imaginations they may not follow scriptures but they have their own imagined worship imagined hero worship like that so krishna says all of this is happening means this is happening because of the three modes people's worship faith they are eating they are sacrifices their charity their austerity all of this is governed by the three modes and then krishna ends this chapter by the syllables om tat sat the syllables om tat sat indicate how austerity charity sacrifice whatever we do they are dictated dictated by the modes and if we perform them without devotional service then they are useless so om tat sat is like spiritualizing our activities that's why shila prabhupada many letters he would end om tat sat if you see the old back to godhead magazines shila prabhupada like that he speaks Uh, and then for propad rights and krishna speaks about this principle of three modes governing our faith 
And now, 17, at the end of 17th chapter, actually the Gita is over. 18th chapter is basically, Krishna is giving a review of all the 17th chapters that he has discussed. It's like an expert teacher, you know, he concludes the class by summarizing. I will not summarize today because it will take another one hour to summarize each chapter. But Krishna summarizes the entire Gita, what he has spoken in the 18th chapter. And what does he summarize? We should practice devotional service, Krishna consciousness. And because see, Arjuna's main reason for not fighting was, he was fearing sinful reaction. So Krishna says in the 18th chapter, what is true renunciation and how to transcend sinful reaction. Krishna says we can do that by becoming renounced from the fruits of your activities. Second, abiding by the order of the super soul in the heart. And third, know your Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Shudra, Varna and offer your best in your nature to Krishna. Brahma Bhuta Prasannatma Anasochati Na Kaangshati Samaha Sarveshu Bhuteshu Mad Bhaktim Labate Param You will attain me, Krishna says. Actually, this Bhagavad Gita, you know, has inspired not just uh, devotees, there are people all from all walks of life. One of the most amazing examples in Indian history, the first recipient of India's most prestigious uh, Medal of Honor in war time is Paramvir Chakra. The first Paramvir Chakra recipient was Captain Somnath Sharma. So he used to always read Bhagavad Gita from the age of 12. So in 1948, when the Afridis and the Pashtuns from the north attacked Srinagar, they were about to take away the Srinagar airport. And just little ahead of that, Captain Somnath Sharma was stationed with his 50 men. And these people from Pakistan who attacked, there were 500 of them. And he, the last message is sent because the supplies were delayed. This is October 1948. And Captain Somna Sharma is waiting for uh, backup and he says the backup is delayed but I will not allow even one inch to be taken away by these uh, invaders. And he and his valiant 50 men, they warded off the 500 people. In fact, they killed 300 plus people, the soldiers of the Pakistan army and the remaining 200 were so scared that they ran off. And naturally because they were outnumbered badly, all 50 of them were killed and they were so, their bodies were so badly mutilated that it was beyond recognition. So when the help came finally and when the Indian army arrived and they were like, they were, they were, they were wonderstruck, how can one man rally his troops, such meager troops, just 50 of them do such an incredible task. And they knew that Captain Somnath Sharma deserves all glory and all valor, but they couldn't recognize his body because all bodies were charred. Then one of Captain Somna Sharma's friends, he said, I know which, who is Captain Somna Sharma. And he went around all the bodies and he picked up, he put his hand in one pocket and then he said, this is Captain Somna Sharma. Because Captain Somna Sharma always carried Bhagavad Gita in his pocket. For that Bhagavad Gita was there in his pocket. So this was the first recipient of Paramvir Chakra. So Bhagavad Gita has inspired um, leaders from all walks of life. And Krishna is telling Arjuna in this 18th chapter that do not fear sinful reactions. Hmm? And he also says how he is accompanying every living entity. Ishware Sarva Bhutanam, Riddheshe Arjuna. Five times in the Gita, different times Krishna tells Arjuna that I am there in the heart as the super soul. And then he says this famous verse, all of us know this, 18.66, we'll chant it together. Sarva dharman parityajya mamekam sharanam rajaha aham tvam sarva pape bhyo moksha shami masuchaha Give up all varieties of religion and surrender unto me. I shall protect you. Do not fear. Again, Krishna is reassuring. You know, sometimes devotees say, Okay, Prabhu, how do you surrender to Krishna? Bhakti yoga. I am already doing karma yoga. What is the difference between karma yoga and bhakti yoga? Very simple difference. What we are doing is service to Krishna only, but when we add a little bit of element of Krishna, what is your desire, then that becomes surrender. See, it is like this. Sakama Karma Yoga is when we are doing Karma Yoga for Krishna, but we are attached to results also. We want results also. But for Krishna, we are working. Nishkama Karma Yoga is not attached to results, but we are attached to that work I am doing. 
and bhakti yoga is we are not attached to the results also we are not attached to the work also we are attached to krishna what krishna wants i will do like you know when i was book distribution uh, i used to do seva marathon i used to manage the go down book go down so one person came and said prabhu ji i see that all the book distributors are having very poor bags to carry books i will donate i will he didn't say donate he said i will get very nice bags for all of you so i assumed is donating he said jeans ka bag hoga strong bags and all of you can then distribute books nicely you can carry so many books so i said very good how many bags uh, you will need i said we are 10 book distributors he said i will get 20 prabhu ji i said wow so charitable so nice he is serving so much so he was serving devotees he was serving krishna so he brought those 20 bags and i gave it to all the book distributors and next day he gave me a bill <laughs> and then i understood oh he was doing sakam karma yoga he was doing karma yoga but he wanted the results also and after some time one devotee came to temple that yatra time everybody had gone and i and baldev prabhu were in the stay back team so he came and said prabhu ji i want to stay in temple and do seva first thing i asked will you take money <laughs> because I, i was struck by that he said kya prabhu ji paisa nahi seva karna hai prabhu ji to i said theek hai theek hai aa jao temple hall saaf karte hain he said nahi prabhu ji i will do backup seva only i said i didn't understand i said you had seva na he said yeah prabhu i will do this seva i can do backup seva and i can do he give four things he can do i said temple hall cleaning mein nahi temple hall mein then i realized he is serving krishna he doesn't want fruits of his activities but he is attached to the service that is nishkam karma yoga then third devotee came he said prabhu ji i want to do seva i said any money you will take no 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 what preference you have no whatever is needed what is needed prabhu ji abhi kya karna hai that is bhakti yoga for like that so of course whatever we are doing is bhakti only if you are remembering krishna so don't feel disqualified it is just that just to give technical uh, <laughs> explanation i gave but if we are simply krishna says just remembering him is bhakti yoga in the, in the 18th chapter conclusion krishna says man mana bhava mad bhakto madhya ji mam namaskuru just remember me man mana bhava mad bhakto so that is the beginning of bhakti yoga don't worry and then finally krishna ends his instructions to arjuna by saying in 18.68 and 69 that what i am sharing with you please tell others या इदम परम गुह्यम मद भक्तेश्व अभिध्यासती कृष्णा टेल्स दैट हुए शेयर दिस नॉलेज विद अदर्स दैर इज नो ह्यूमन बीइंग मोर डियर टू मी दैन हिम और हर न च तस्मा मनुष्यु कश्चि मे प्रियकृतमा इन द फ्यूचर ऑल्सो दैट विल बी नो वन मोर डियर टू मी दैन दैट पर्सन हु शेयर दिस नॉलेज विद हिम एंड दिस इज अ मंथ ऑफ गीता जयंती मैराथॉन so is an opportunity to become most dear to krishna because krishna is not only giving his message of love to arjuna he is telling that those who spread his message of love to others krishna considers that person as most dear to him after hearing all of this krishna now practices what he taught what did he teach arjuna he taught arjuna that be detached from the results right so krishna tells arjuna arjuna i have taught you everything now yata ichchhe tata kuru whatever you want you can do <laughs> and arjuna also has understood the gita very nicely what does he say nashtamoha smritir labdva tat prasadan maya chuta sitosmi gata sangena karishye vachanam tava all my doubts are gone i am now free of all delusion my memory is revived i am now situated strongly and i'm going to do what you tell me i'm going to fight this war look at contrast this with the first chapter and see how arjuna is transformed and who is narrating this to whom sanjaya to dhritara and sanjaya start getting ecstatic he says my hair so standing on end what an adbhuta what a wonderful conversation i am amazed and he goes into ecstasy <clears throat> and he tells dhritarashtra his opinion he said i am convinced o king dhritarashtra that whoever hears this his life will be successful and wherever there is krishna yatra yogeshwaro krishna tatra partha danurdara tatra shri vijayor bhute dhruva nitir matir mama wherever there is krishna wherever there is arjuna yatra yogeshwaro krishna yatra partha danurdara there what will be there tatra shri opulences vijaya victory 
and dhruva certainly i am saying there will be bhuti exceptional power and neeti morality so sanjaya says wherever there is krishna and arjuna wherever there is discussion of bhagavad gita there will be victory opulences morality and exceptional power see shila prabhupad had this confidence i was hearing one lecture of shila prabhupad recently vrindavan 1976 and uh, you know is telling in the class these demons are attacking us they are accusing us of brainwashing but we will win because kamsa also attacked vrindavan and devotees are laughing and prabhupad is laughing in the class and i was thinking such a big case is going on and prabhupad is able to extract that happiness and joy and that confidence in the devotees and i was amazed i kept hearing that class two three times just to enter that space where shila prabhupad is celebrating with devotees now i was thinking shila prabhupad is like that you know covered boyfriend of krishna all those friends entering agasur's mouth <laughs> knowing that krishna is there we don't have to worry so that is the power of somebody is fixed in krishna so like this sanjaya concludes now if after all this discussion that we have had in the last 5 minutes now if i have to share with you that one thing one take home thing that what is that one message from the gita that we could take home the main message from bhagavad gita which i have gathered based on shila prabhupada's teaching is simple wherever we are whatever we are doing at whatever situation we are in let us offer ourselves to krishna let us offer everything we have whatever we are doing to god let us make that beginning what does that mean offer everything to krishna means basically krishna like simple example what did you do just now in the last one hour you heard a class so you could say something like krishna i heard this bhagavad gita class this is an offering to you i offer this to you now i did this service of giving a class so i could say radha gopinath krishna this is my offering to you like you may you know like i have to give a um, like i chanted my rounds today so i was feeling too sleepy i was struggling so at the end i could say something like this krishna today my chanting was difficult i was struggled in my chanting but i completed my 16 rounds krishna it was not the best chanting but i offer with whatever i did i offer this to you please accept it so like this if we offer whatever we do every day to krishna then we are practicing bhagavad gita on a practical level sometimes devotees express that this also becomes very uh, mechanical and ritualistic how to offer everything to krishna it becomes offering to krishna if you want to make it very special then there is a trick there is a technique very very nice thing we could do we could answer the question how when you ask when you put that question how in your offering then you can invest emotions into that offering and then you will see that your offering becomes very personal to krishna like for example uh, today evening i have to give a class to few children so those children will be coming now when i am giving that class how can i make that an offering to krishna so i i have to say like so i could i could say like this to krishna krishna this is an offering to you but if i add how if i ask this question how is this giving class to children an offering to krishna when i answer that question then there is a good chance that i can make it a personal offering how is my giving class to children an offering because these children are children of devotees and devotees are dear to krishna and these children are also very dear to krishna so if i make them happy if i give them krishna consciousness they will be happy and krishna will be happy something like that so if you are working krishna this job is an offering to you or if you are working like for example if you are doing business krishna this is the best talent i have and i can offer you only what i have i can't offer you what i don't have so with all my talent which you have given me i am offering this to you so like this we can make this beginning in our life and to conclude i would like to reassure that um, the mood the approach to study the gita is we need to have a very positive curiosity mindset not a cynical mindset many times as we get older we get cynical oh i know this i know all the verses but a curiosity mindset is like a child's mindset you know i want to know what is there in the gita and then wanting to know more in the mood of understanding what devotees are saying and shila prabhupad was always absorbed in krishna and we have to be absorbed and attentive and shila prabhupad would relish krishna katha you know shruti kirti prabhu says 
that he would read Krishna killing demons to Srila Prabhupada from Krishna book and Srila Prabhupada would sometimes clap his hands and be excited. And Shrutakirti Prabhu would say, Prabhupada already knows this pastime, why is he getting so excited? Because Prabhupada would enter that pastime, he would be in that space. Even Parishit Maharaj, he expresses great concern when Putana is about to feed Krishna. And Shukdev Goswami has to reassure him, don't worry, Krishna is safe. But Parishit Maharaj already knows Krishna was safe and then he grew up and he taught my grandfather Bhagavad Gita. But still, when he's in that pastime, he's hearing that pastime, he's absorbed, he's present. So we have to be present and absorbed. And like this, if you practice Bhagavad, uh, hearing Bhagavad Gita and scriptures, then everything in Krishna consciousness will make sense. And every day will be like a festival. So I would like to end by asking one riddle to all of you. Once there was a tree and there were three birds on that tree. And a hunter came, he took a gun, he stood close to the tree and he looked into the sky and fired a gunshot into the sky. After he fired, how many birds were left on the tree branch? No one. Why? Because of the sound they flew away. No. All three were remaining on the branch. Why? Because they didn't have the determination to act on what they saw and heard. So many times we hear a lot. We read, we see, but we don't have determination. We are stuck on the branch. Bhagavad Gita is meant to help us take off, fly off from this material world branch, fly off to the spiritual world. We need to, we need to take off. You know, it's, imagine somebody says, I want to be a great cook and he's watching all those recipes, you know, those cook shows that they have some, what, I don't know what they call it. Those cooks come on TV, they show cooking and after watching all of that, he says, no, but I don't like cooking. I like to watch these cooking shows. Or somebody says, I love yoga, you know. I can watch yoga for hours. I can watch Ramdev Baba. <laughs> what is the use? If you want to be a yogi, you have to do yoga. If you want to be a cook, you, you have to... Similarly, if we are hearing Bhagavad Gita, that is great, but we also have to act on these principles by offering what we are doing to Krishna, by meditating on Krishna's instructions, by coming closer to the devotees, and serving in Sankirtan. So, I would like to express my profuse gratitude to all of you and to Srila Prabhupada and to the devotees in this temple for giving me an opportunity to share with all of you today the summary of the Bhagavad Gita. Thank you very much. Please take part in the Gita recitation now, which will start after this uh, Aarti. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Bhagavad Gita ki jai, Shri Krishna Chandra Bhagavan ki jai, Nitai Gaur Premanande. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna.